Huge thanks to my exclusive Computex sponsor, ASRock. I use an ASRock Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard in my personal rig and I absolutely love it. So make the right choice with your next build and get yourself an ASRock motherboard. Links are in the description down below. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my adorable co-host Teddy and today we have some really exciting news for you. So the AMD live stream just ended like five minutes ago and while it was going on I was jotting some notes down with all of their announcements and that's what I'm going to be going over with you in this video and giving my opinion on them. So let's start with what they were talking about. It's sort of, I wrote the notes down as it went through, so I'll just be covering it that way. So they have their 64 core ROM. These are their data center uh, CPUs. They have double the performance of Intel's of two Intel Cascade Lake 8280 CPUs. You might not care about it, but this is really good for AMD because that's where Intel makes a ton of money. And if AMD can really tap into that market as they've been trying to do, that's going to make them so much money. And they can use that money to make you know better desktop CPUs and just use it for a load of things. Uh, so that's going to be really, really good for AMD and that's going to be launching next quarter. Uh, the PlayStation 5 will have a Zen 2 CPU in it and a Navi GPU. So that's going to be really interesting when that comes out in the future. Then as far as the Radeon news, there's RDNA, which is what AMD is saying that will take Radeon into the future. So Navi will be on 7 nanometer. I guess we all knew that. It's also going to be the first PCIe 4.0 enabled GPU. So that's good. 1.25 times the performance per clock and 1.5 times higher performance per watt. That's good to see. And the RX 5000 series, as it's going to be called for AMD's 50th anniversary is looking really solid. So the RX 5700 GPU in Strange Brigade beat the RTX 2070 by 10%. That's really solid. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good there. Very good indeed. And it's going to be coming out in July, which is way sooner than I think any of us thought that a Navi GPU would be coming out. So it's going to be called the RX 5000 series. And it's going to be launching in uh, July, but they'll have more information on June 10th, I believe. So we should know a bit more about that. As far as the mobile CPUs go, second gen Ryzen Mobile is looking really, really good uh, with more and more companies going to be using it. This is also really solid because Intel has had near a monopoly on the uh, mobile market, you know, with their laptops and everything else for the longest time it was pretty much you could only get them with Intel CPUs in them. So this is also going to be really good for AMD. Tap into that market. It's looking like a ton more companies are going to be using the Ryzen mobile CPUs. Uh, they're looking very powerful as well. And again, this is just like the data center stuff. This is just going to be good for AMD in terms of uh, giving them more revenue, which they can use to you know put into more research and development, things like that. But let's get on to the main event. Zen 2 or Ryzen 3000 and this is looking really really solid for AMD so it's gonna have double the floating point and double the cache size compared to Ryzen 2000 so it's having a 15 percent IPC increase over Zen plus or the previous generation 15 percent IPC increase uh, from Intel we didn't see an increase like that in IPC since Sandy Bridge, I believe, was about 18%. So Sandy Bridge saw an 18% uplift all those years ago on IPC. And since then, it's been, on average, about 5%. Uh, sometimes lower than that. Sometimes only like 3 or 2%. IPC increases from Intel for quite a while now. And Zen 2 is going to be 15%. That is really, really, really good for AMD. I honestly, myself, I was expecting about 10%. That's what I thought. I thought 10%, that'd be really solid. But 15%, yeah, that's that's stunning. So as far as the CPUs themselves, the Ryzen 7 3700X, that's going to be an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, 3.6 gigahertz base clock, a 4.4 gigahertz boost clock, a 36 megabyte uh, cache there, which is really pretty fat. 
Oh, uh, that's good. And most amazingly, a 65 watt TDP. Yeah, 65 watts. Wow, with clock speeds like that on an eight core. That is crazy. Uh, that's just phenomenal. And compared to the 2700X, it's gonna have 15% more single threaded performance, as I just mentioned. 18% uh, more multi-threaded performance. And of course, it has that much lower TDP. You know, 2700X was 105 watt TDP, and this is 65 watts. So that's very impressive uh, compared to the uh, previous generation. And in the Cinebench R20, it was 33% faster than the Intel 9700K, the i7 9700K. That's crazy. It was matching the 9700K in single threader performance, but it had a 27% uh, higher performance over the 9700K in multi-threaded. So that's gonna be a very, very powerful CPU uh, and it's looking very solid there. Now the Ryzen 7 3800X, so that's also gonna be an eight core, 16 thread CPU, 3.9 gigahertz on the base there and uh, 4.5 gigahertz on the boost. So you're seeing a, a decent uplift there, especially on the base clock. Again, 36 megabyte cache and the TDP on that's going up to a 105 watts, just like the 2700X. It's gonna be matching, well they showed that it was matching the uh, i9-9900K in PUBG in terms of FPS. They were pretty much the same. And that's what they were saying is that they just wanted it so that the CPU is out of the way as possible, which is what we all want. Uh, that's really good considering the very high clock speeds of the 9900K, which, you know, the, it goes up to five gigahertz and they often will sit between 4.7 and five gigahertz. So that's really impressive for that uh, 3800X uh, there. That's, that's really good. A 69% performance increase with the 3800X and the RX 5000, uh, RX 5700 series GPU with the PCI 4.0 and the new 3D Mark test. Now this was a bit shifty, I have to say. So you can see it was against like a 2080 Ti. No, this doesn't mean that it has 69% more performance than the 2080 Ti. Don't sort of fall for that. This, the, I think if they did everything else in the live stream pretty good, but this was a little bit shifty to me, a little bit dodgy. This is just showing the bandwidth, uh, you know, with PCIe 4.0. That's all it's showing. It's not gonna have a 69% performance increase over a 2080 Ti. It's not. You know, they showed earlier that it's doing 10% better than a 2070, so that doesn't even make sense. Uh, so don't get confused with that. They were just showing off the bandwidth. That's all they were showing there. It's still impressive, but it's just don't take it the wrong way. Then they're launching the Ryzen 9s, as we know. Uh, we've been hearing about for a while. So the 3900X, that's going up to 12 cores, 24 threads, 3.8 on the base, 4.6 on the boost, a whopping 70 megabyte cache. Whoa. And uh, 105 watt TDP again. And it beats the i9-9920X in Blender by 18%. So that's a mainstream, so remember this is on AM4 still. Uh, this is a mainstream AMD CPU 12 core beating an HEDT Intel CPU by 18%. You know, that's, that's, that's crazy. Uh, so this is gonna be really powerful. Now what was interesting was they didn't talk about the 16 core. There have been so many rumors around this 16 core part that I think there is one and, and I think they will be bringing it out, but just not yet. I think they're just gonna start with these and then maybe a few months down the road, they'll release a 16 core. That's my feeling anyway. Uh, I was surprised that they didn't announce it because there's been, at this point with the amount of rumors and leaks and everything, I feel like it's, it's definitely out there in the wild and uh, I maybe it's just not quite ready yet. And so they're just gonna roll out the 12 core for now being the top dog of the Ryzen 9. Um, but I, I don't think they're just gonna have a single Ryzen 9 uh, on, on their platform on the AM4. So it'll be interesting to see. It'll probably be called something like the 3950X or something, but uh, we'll see how that plays out. Now, as far as the pricing goes, so the 3700X coming in at 329 US, 3800X at 399, 
and the 3900X at 499 and that's particularly uh, good because the Intel CPU, the uh, 9920X, is about well, more than double what the 3900X will be coming in at, that 499 price. That's crazy. Yeah, so this is... This is really, really solid. The rest of the pricing, 3700X at 329, yeah, expected, the standard. Same with the 3800X there, that's that's fine. Uh, the 3900X at $500, it's an enthusiast CPU. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit more pricey. I believe that's the same as what they launched the 1800X uh, way back, it was 499, right? So, yeah, that's nothing out of the ordinary. And considering how far it undercuts their competition, I, a few people had mentioned to me, they said, Kevin, just because AMD undercut the competition by 50% before, it doesn't mean they're going to do it again. And I thought, that's, that's true, but, but you know, history often repeats itself. And look what's happened. They've undercut their competition by more than half this time. Uh, so, and when the, when the uh, 1800X came out, the 6900K was sort of the main competition. Again, an Intel HEDT CPU. And they undercut the the 6900K at that point was selling for 1,000 US, and the 1800X came in uh, for uh, $500, so it undercut it by half. And this is looking like it's done it again by half, a bit more than half even. So very very good, and they're going to be launching uh, July 7th, so not that far away. This is so as far as so that, that's all the news. So let's get to my opinion. This, I, I heard, I, I've already seen some people say, oh, it wasn't quite as much as I wanted. This is what I spoke about in my previous videos with people overhyping it too much. Is this good for AMD? Yes. 15% IPC. Guys, how many generations have we waited around with Intel and getting like two, three, four, you know, maybe 5% IPC upgrades? And people would still go out and buy the new CPUs. 15%, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really, really good. Uh, these CPUs are looking extremely solid. I think, honestly, the eight cores, I mean, the, the, they're just focused on the high end. There's obviously gonna be the mid-level ones uh, and the lower level CPUs, entry level, I should say. And they're gonna be very good as well. But as far as the high end, this is looking very solid for them. For people looking for extremely good gaming performance, maybe doing just a bit of productivity, but they're not sort of all out in productivity, then something like that 3800X is looking good. Even that 3700X, I mean, if you're gonna overclock it, just get that 3700X, that looks solid. Eight cores, good speed there. Yeah, that's gonna be phenomenal. I'll be interested to see which coolers they come with as well, uh, the stock coolers that come with these CPUs. That'll be very interesting to see. The, obviously, the, the 3900X, that's gonna be good for guys like me. You know, people that are doing gaming and and uh, productivity, you know, photo editing, video editing, things like that. That's gonna be who goes for things like the 3900X, which looks like that, that performance, that especially the multi-threaded performance, is gonna be through the roof. Uh, so I, I suspect a lot of people will get that, and maybe a lot of the sort of enthusiasts will go for that one as well. So yeah, I'm actually very impressed by this. Um, looking at this, I will switch to the 3900X. I mean, why wouldn't I? If you or me, in my position, you know, you're a content creator, you're doing productivity and you're gaming. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? So yeah, I, I am very impressed by this. The other stuff, the mobile stuff and the data center stuff is good too, but of course we always like the desktop stuff. So yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm impressed, I really am. And this is really good for AMD. Uh, I, I think this is gonna be very, very good for them going forward. And Intel have basically got nothing. They're not, they're, they're, we've heard they're not really even gonna be announcing anything. You know, a 9900K, which is like the same, is just one that just can do a, you know, eight cores at five gigahertz. You just turn multi-core enabler on in your 9900K and it's the same thing. So, <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. But I wanna throw it to you guys. That's enough out of me. What do you think? Uh, were you impressed by this? Did it live up to the hype? Did you maybe think, maybe you thought it would be better? I don't know. I, I would actually really like to know your thoughts on the 16 core part. Uh, do you think they're gonna be bringing that out later? Do you think maybe they just weren't ready to release it quite yet? Or what do you think's going on with that? I'd really like to know. Let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'm gonna have a lot of great Computex content coming right up, especially X570 content. I'll be getting into that first thing tomorrow, X570. 
So you're definitely going to want to check that out. So subscribe to my channel, Tech Showdown, if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.